Welcome to a supercut for the Things You Missed series. Today, we'll be going through all parts of the Eltis Plateau. If this is your first supercut, let me quickly address why I'm doing this so you don't need to worry that I'm just regurgitating old content for the views. That is not at all what this channel is about. I just want to make the guides as clear and fun as possible for you. So I realized, why am I making you watch three or four videos for certain areas when I could bundle them all into one big video for your convenience and pleasure? Hence, the supercut. So if at any point throughout this video I talk about in the next part, for example, I've just left that in because without it, the video wouldn't sync up and you may have missed some vital footage. Now that you know that, please sit back, relax and enjoy. Good morning, good afternoon and good evening. Wherever you are and whatever you're doing, I hope you're having a fantastic day. In today's episode of the things you may have missed in Elden Ring, we're going to be covering the first area of the Altus Plateau. Before we get into it, you're going to need the two halves of the medallion to operate the Grand Lift Dectus. The first half you should already have from way back near the start of the game in Limgrave. You get this from the highest tower in Fort Height. And for the second half, I'll give you a very quick run through now. You just need to head to Fort Faroth in Kaled, located just here on the map. We'll be covering this fort in full when we cover this section of Kaelid, but for now I'll just speed through and show you exactly where the medallion is. Once you've grabbed both halves, I'll meet you back at the Grand Lift and we'll progress into the Altus Plateau. As we're heading towards the Grand Lift and coming into the Altus Plateau, at this point I'd just like to ask you to subscribe to the channel if you enjoy content like this. And please give this video a like and drop a comment if you enjoy the video. And now that we've made it to Altus Plateau, we'll head pretty much directly north of the lift Grab this Site of Grace here and continue on to the first tip. From the Site of Grace we just unlocked, we're going to follow the marker all the way up the main road to the northeast here, and this will take us in the direction of the map for the area. When you get quite close to the map, you'll come across a golden seed here, and right next to it, as long as you've been progressing his quest line, is Corrin. As you're exhausting his dialogue, he mentions about the Noble Gold Mask, and as I've just marked on the map here, you'll find Gold Mask all the way to the north of this area, right on the end of a broken bridge and we'll actually be visiting him near the end of the video. So with that done, we'll move on to the next tip. Back at the Altus Plateau site of Grace, head all the way to the southeast, and you'll be able to swing around and hop down these mountains, and here you'll find another Evergel. Godfroy, ridiculous name aside, is a descendant of Godric the Grafted, and was actually the first Grafted. So Godric is an even bigger tool than we already knew he was, and actually just stole the idea from this dude. He's basically the real Godric. This boss fight works practically the same as Godric the Grafted, except he's a bit more aggressive, he's got way more damage and way more health. Also, he doesn't have a phase two where he gets a giant dragon head on his arm, but he really makes up for it due to the fact that he's just incredibly powerful. Also, due to the fact it's an Everjail, you can't use summons, you can't use your spirit ashes. So it's a bit of a challenging one, this. And when you do finally take him down, you'll get 26,000 runes and the Godfrey Icon. The Godfrey Icon is an incredibly awesome talisman that enhances your charged spells and skills. And now that you've felled Godfrey, we'll move on to the next area. Once again, back at the same site of Grace, we're going to head north and slightly to the west just where I've placed this marker. Before we move on, far to the north in this fog here is where the map for this portion of the area is. So we're only gonna very briefly dip our toes into the uncovered area of the map here for this video. We'll be covering most of this area in a later video once we've got the map. So keep heading north and eventually you'll come to the Lux Ruins. Deal with all the demi-humans around here. Then there's a Scarab that you can kill that'll give you the Shield Crash Ash of War. And if you come down into this little cave, you'll face the demi-human queen Gillica boss fight. Defeat her, you'll get a few runes, and through the next door you can get the Ritual Sword Talisman. Now head back up and keep heading northeast. After you hop off the edge of the cliff here, you'll get yourself a golden seed. And we're going to very briefly dip our toes into a little bit more of the unexplored area of the map. But most of this, as I say, we'll save for the next video. So hop up these few cliffs and you'll see that the beast eye quivers. And you can go and light that gatekeeper statue as well. Now in these ruins, you'll be faced with a tibia marina, who's significantly more powerful than the other ones we've faced so far. Be very, very careful of the giant, giant skeletons he summons. They're absolutely lethal. But apart from that, 
this fight is very similar to the other two that we fought so far in this series. And once he's dead, you'll get a load of runes, death root, and the tibia's summons. That's all we're going to be doing here in Wyndham Ruins for now. We'll come back and explore the rest of these ruins along with the rest of this area in a later video. Right by the golden seed that we just picked up, you can grab yourself the Erd Tree Grazing Hill site of grace just here. And now we're going to head southeast and start clearing out all of these camps with all the soldiers and knights in. I'll blitz through here and then just call out the few items of note worth grabbing whilst you're here. So in this chest, you can grab yourself a sacrificial twig. And once you've cleared out the main camp, you'll get the Troll's Golden Sword from one caravan and the Great Shield Talisman from the other. There's a ton of camps around this area and a ton of enemies along with them. So even though there isn't much loot apart from them two weapons at the end there, you may as well clear out all the camps while we're here because they're very easy enemies to kill and they're going to give you loads of runes whilst doing so. Now finally, head back to the same site of Grace again head northeast and within this pool with all the trees in you'll see there's a scarab floating above it when you get near it it'll drop down and when you take it out you'll get the ash of war blood blade which is just awesome such an epic ash of war and we're done with this area so we'll head back to the altus plateau and on to the next one now that we're back here, pass the time until it's night time and we're going to go face a knight's cavalry. On the way, head over into this camp here though and we're going to deal with a bunch of the bastard, flappy, flyy beast men twats. And once they're all dead, you can grab yourself a stone sword key. Now go and deal with the knight's cavalry. He's nothing compared to the one we already dealt with in Caelid, so you should be absolutely fine. And you'll be rewarded with the Ash of War Shared Order. And finally for this one, it takes me bloody ages to find this scarab. So you'll have to bear with me, and I will be able to show you it in a minute. This is an invisible scarab, but unlike the other invisible scarabs, it doesn't leave the kind of, like, glittery footprints that they usually leave. You'll see when I finally spot it off in the distance here, there's just a tiny little dust aura around it. So just look very carefully around this area and you will find it eventually. Now that you know what you're looking for as you've just seen me find it, that should help you out. And you'll get the Earthshaker Ash of War. That's it for this one. So we're going to finish up by grabbing another site of grace just to the northeast of us and I'll meet you there. Head pretty much directly north from here and you'll come to a camp with a few ogres in it. Once you've dealt with them, you can grab a perfume bottle. Now we'll head back on the main road where we found the map and Brother Corin, and we'll follow it round all the way to the end. Once you are at the end of this road you'll find a finger reader crone a site of grace a traveling merchant and a portal which we'll be visiting later on in the video so rest up here and then we'll do a few things in this area okie dokie as we're it we may as well speak to the merchant one of the worst merchants in the game honestly but he's got a few bits we may as well grab stock up on stone sword keys if you need Grab yourself the Ancient Dragon Apostles Cookbook 2, which lets you craft lightning pots. And then he's got a few notes as well with a few hints and tips about the game for you. Grab all the bits and bobs that you want. And I'm just going to bring the map up for you now and talk you through what we will and won't be covering for the rest of this video. So anything north of where we are now, we'll be doing in later videos. Where the Minor Erd Tree is, this is a huge chasm, which probably is going to be a video in its own right. And then also the whole of the northern region above us as well will also be another video so we haven't actually got much left to cover and it's all going to be much further down south from where we are at the moment so now we're going to go back to the Altus Highway Junction and head all the way along that southeast path to the crater that you can just see in the map at the end there feel free to kill all the enemies but I just ran past them all and when you get to the giant crater at the end that you saw on the map, you'll be faced with the Falling Star Beast. Very cool enemy, I really like this guy. He reminds me of a way less difficult version of the Raging Bull from Sekiro. So if you got good at beating that bull, you shouldn't have any issues with this guy. Though I'd be lying if I said I didn't die to him at least a few times off camera. When you kill him dead, you'll get a Somber Smithing Stone 5, 5 Smithing Stone 6s, and an absolute ton of Gravity Stone fans and chunks. Awesome reward from this boss. And we're done here, so we'll move on to the next area. You now rejoin me stood just above this church you can see in front of me here. I did the run here off camera because I wanted to make sure this was actually accessible. Now that I know that it is, all you want to do is teleport yourself to the Altus Highway Junction and then run directly north and you'll find yourself where I am now. However, I've just remembered something huge that I should have shown you a few videos ago. So before we drop down there, we're actually going to travel back to the Rhea Lucaria Academy, specifically to the main academy gate, Site of Grace. From here, 
Head past the seal slightly to your north, and as long as you progressed Eurus questline in Limgrave, you should be able to interact with a sign here and be summoned to assist him. You'll teleport to his world, and you'll be tasked with defeating the bloody finger Ravenmount Assassin. Once he's dead, you'll get your usual reward of a rune arc, and then back in your world, you'll instantly be rewarded with the Raptor of the Mist's Ash of War. And you can now go and speak to Yura here for a Smithing Stone 5 reward. And he'll also tell you about his hunt for Eleonora, the deadliest of all bloody fingers. Now teleport back to the highway junction and run to that church you saw me at just a minute ago. You can drop down and you'll unfortunately see Yura on the ground dying, having just been beaten by Eleonora. When he dies, you can loot the Nagakiba from him, and you will very swiftly be invaded by Eleonora herself. If you let her go on the offensive, she is lethal. Her pole blade is awesome, and she has a few different dragon head incantations as well. You're not going to fuck up the questline if you do die here. You can die and keep coming and trying her again and again. Good luck, and once you beat her, you'll get the Purifying Crystal tier, and you'll get Eleonora's pole blade. And the Purifying Crystal tier is a very unique crystal tier, in that it only has one purpose. It is used to negate an attack from a particular boss later on in the game. I'm going to leave it there and we'll revisit it when we find that boss. Now that she's dead, you've got the weapons, you've looted the sacred tear from this church, you can move on and we're going to go into the very last tip for this video. Back at the forest spanning Great Bridge site of grace, we're going to go through the portal that we came to earlier. And you'll see this brings us out at the other end of the broken bridge. And you remember who I said was at the end of this broken bridge? It's Gold Mask. And there's some epic dialogue right here. If you speak to him, he will say all of zero words to you. Exhaust his many, many lines of dialogue. And now you can go back to Brother Corin and let him know you've found Gold Mask and start progressing the quest line. I won't do that in this video because it is literally just going back and forth between the two until you get them to meet up. And and then you will have progressed the quest line far enough to meet up with Corin and Gold Mask in the Royal Capital, which you will have already seen from my Things You Missed in the Royal Capital video. So with that, we'll leave it there. I'm so excited to show you and explore more of the Altus Plateau. So we'll be revisiting this very soon, probably in the next video, as long as I've got nothing else planned. Welcome back to the next part in our Things You May Have Missed in Elden Ring series. We're going to be continuing on with Altus Plateau today, primarily focusing on the big crater in the middle, with a few bits around the edges as well, and we'll wrap up with a cave all the way down the south by itself because it didn't make sense to include it in any of the other videos, so we'll tag it onto this one. As we're clearing out this caravan and setting up for the first tip, I just want to ask you to subscribe to the channel and like the video if you enjoy content like this and would like to see more, and thank you so, so much for anyone who already has. And with that out of the way, that leads us perfectly into tip one, which is clearing out this caravan and grabbing the Great Stars weapon. If you missed it right at the start of the video, just a very quick recap of how we got here. Start off at the Road of Iniquity Site Path Site of Grace, which is pretty much directly underneath the bridge where we found gold mask at the end of the last video then just head southwest along the road here and you'll come across the caravan in no time at all once you've finished there you should be pretty much right outside the writhe blood ruins and i'll meet you inside them so we can start the next tip now that we're at the writhe blood ruins you'll be faced with a bunch of the squidgy squelchy slime enemies and an absolutely gigantic one holy crap is he big don't feel like you need to beat them all because none of them drop any worthy loot and they also give you a pathetic amount of runes but they're fun to kill, so do as you will. And once you've finished murderizing and looting everything up here, you can grab a load of sacramental buds from the various ruins. There's a few scarlet rot doggos as well, including one big one. And once you've had your fun with all the enemies up here, you can go down into the basement room just here, and you'll be faced with the Sanguine Noble. I'm not sure if this is just because my weapon's quite strong or because I was very aggressive, but he was pathetic. Like, bless his heart. He tried and he died. And then for beating him, you're rewarded with the Bloody Hellis Heavy Thrusting Sword. I've never used this sword because I have yet to do an arcane build, but it looks absolutely sick. Oh my god, it makes me really want to try out so, so many different builds in this game because there are so many badass weapons. So yeah, it's got the arcane scaling. It has blood loss buildup as well. And it's Ash of War sounds insanely cool. Nimbly avoid an attack, securing some distance from foes. Follow up with a strong attack to perform a sudden lunge and then press strong attack again to perform a sweeping slice. Doesn't that sound awesome? Anyone that's used it, let me know if it actually is as good as it sounds because I'd love to do an arcane build and run 
this for at least a portion of the game. Anyway, now that I've finished swooning over that weapon, we're done with this tip, so I'll head back to the Road of Iniquity Grace site, and I'll meet you there for the next tip. Just slightly southeast of the site of Grace, where I am on the map here, you'll see a Scarabop on this little tiny building. Once you take him out, you'll get the protection of the Erd Tree. Now we're going to head directly south, being careful not to fall off the cliff, like I very nearly did just then. And a little bit further down, you can get yourself a Golden Seed. Now we're going to head back up top again, where the caravan was and hug the edge of the cliff as you're running around here you'll see you can jump onto part of the broken bridge and then you want to hop down onto an even more broken part of the bridge now get off your horse to make sure you don't fall off and just on the edge of the rubble here you'll get the radiant gold mask look at it <laughs> i'm a sunflower we're a pretty little sunflower Oh my god, I love it so much. I genuinely think I will just wear this for the whole rest of the game. This is my favourite thing ever. And if you are going for a faith build, along with the Golden Order seal, this also strengthens Golden Order incantations. So you can be a super mega faith user if you combine the two. I love the little quote at the bottom as well here. To you who seek to shine as I do, wear it well. And I'm not even lying to you. I actually read out that line whilst praising the sun IRL. I am currently sat here with my arms in the air praising the sun. Oh, I'm so sad. Sad. We're going to make our way to the minor Erd tree right at the center of this area now. But just before I move on from where we just picked up the mask, I just wanted to address these motherfuckers. Oh my god, I hate this enemy. Now, don't get me wrong. It's not the kind of hatred you have towards, say, like the dogs or the birds. They're just so erratic and so fast. Oh my god. But these guys, because of the death blight status effect that they cause, and because they're pretty tanky and pretty fast as well for how big they are, god, they are just they're lethal. And now that I've had a little rant about three of my most hated enemies, what's your most hated enemy in the game? Genuinely interested and can't believe it's taken me this many videos before I've asked the question. So please let me know, what is your most hated enemy and why? Because it's really fun to talk about and it's really nice when someone else hates the enemy as much as you because you kind of, you feel like someone's on your side. <laughs> it's like, okay, I'm not the only one that loathes this enemy. Right, rant over. I would also just like to say that when you kill these guys, they drop gold shit. Fucking gold poo poo. That's how awful these enemies are. All right, and now that we're at the base of the minor Erd tree, oh, I was praying for another Erd tree avatar. I can deal with the Erd tree avatars, the putrid avatars. Easy, easy peasy. Nope, 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 nope. It's a massive boss of the bastards I was just talking about. Worm face. And he absolutely destroyed me. So be super careful with this guy. No shame in summoning your ashes. I really wanted to prove to myself I could kill him without summoning, and I did it was fairly easy the second time when I just kept scooching around him because he's fairly easily staggerable. But God, he can be such a pain. Anyway, when you defeat him, you get the Crimson Spill, Crystal Tear, and the Speckled Hard Tear. The first one, temporarily boosting your max HP, and the second one, boosting resistance and healing statuses. I haven't used the Speckled Hard Tear myself, but I've heard it be used against certain status effect causing bosses and enemies. Apparently, it's absolutely fantastic, so I'll probably swap out my mixed physic and actually start to use that speckled hard tier from now on especially because as you've just seen as i was running to the wood folk ruins to defeat this scarab i got death blighted to death again yay fuck's sake so we'll make the run back to the wood folk ruins defeat the scarab this time and get the ash of war golden butt slam and also just a little bit further along the wall can pick up the nomadic warriors cookbook 19 as well and then in another section of the ruins you can also grab the icon shield and some gravel stone and that's all we need to do for this area so down towards the southwest here i've just marked a location on the map and there's a site of grace there so i'll meet you around there here we are at the site of grace i just mentioned and we're going to go directly west towards where we're going to find another tower on the way you'll find three of the lesser worm faces all doing a little rain dance around this scarab and if you manage to take it out you'll get yourself a somber smithing stone five there's a couple of other items on the way nothing of note though i'll grab the golden rune three here and head to the tower as you can see you're now going to 
gonna be thinking, Dom, what fucking tower? There's literally nothing here. <laughs> it is a mirage tower. Go and interact with the gargoyle holding the book and you'll see it says to touch three phantom crests. One of them is right here, right next to it, so you know what you're looking out for. So it's these spectral, blue, glowy, floaty things. So we'll interact with this one straight away and now in the inventory, you'll see you've been given a map and that signals all three locations for the phantoms that you're looking out for. I'm gonna ping their rough locations on my map so you can see where we're going and then we'll head straight over to the first one now. On the way there, I'll take out another worm face for some more golden shit and a Mikula's Lily. And sure enough, here is the next phantom statue. You don't need to take out all of these spirit gargoyles that spawn. It will perpetually spawn them until you take it out. And once you take it out, they'll all just die and despawn. And now head all the way to the other side of this canyon, all the way to the east, and then scooch up this mountain here. And you'll see there's a suspicious looking rock because there's a load of green grass growing from it. Take a swing, it was an illusion. And there is the final phantom. Once you've taken them all out, you can run back to the Mirage Tower. Be careful of the worm faces on the way. And you'll see it's now here. So we can climb up the ladder as usual. And then in the chest here, you'll get Unseen Form and Unseen Blade, which hide both yourself and your weapon, respectively, and five slumbering eggs from the corpse here. We're done here, so we'll teleport back to the Bower of Bounty, Site of Grace, and I'll meet you in the next tip. This is a super quick one. I've just marked three locations on the map. We're going to grab a few items, and then I'm going to show you the entrance to the first cave that we're going to explore. So beeline it for point one that I've marked on the map, and when you're here, be very careful of all the slugs that are around, and you can grab yourself some soft cotton. Slightly further east still, you can get some poison bone darts from this section of the ruins, and then where you see a ton of these lesser worm face dudes you can go down into the basement open up the door and in here you'll get the wrath of gold that's all there is to do here so we're now just going to head south and go towards point three which is the cave that i've marked on the map and once we're here take the lift down and we'll go through the altus tunnel together now that we're here there's nothing too fancy about altus tunnel it's another smithing material cave with lots of them crystal miner enemies so just kill everything you see and loot everything you see straight away in this first room you can grab a rune arc from the chest here then there is an absolute ton of smithing stone 5 and somber smithing stone 5 that you can grab from this tunnel and obviously with these crystal miner guys blunt weapons that deal strike damage such as maces and hammers are absolutely fantastic as is most magic which is why i'm pretty much just using the weapon art from the moon veil because it one shots them all so if you've got any of the above this will be an absolute breeze for you go through looting and killing as you see fit and i'll just call out the one or two important things in this this dungeon so as you come out of this opening here just above you you'll see another malformed star there is an item below him so i'm sure there must be a way to get to him but i couldn't find it so hopefully you've got a ranged weapon that's long distance enough that you can take him out you don't need to take him out but it's going to be a lot easier to loot this section of the dungeon if you can so once he's dead you can run to your left and grab a golden rune seven then jump on this tree trunk and run all the way to the top and you can get an arsenal charm plus one now swing down take out the crystal snails and you can get some glintstone scraps and you're done for this little area i never end up making it to where the malformed star is so i have no idea what that item is but from the research that i've done i have taken you or i will be taking you through every single important item in this dungeon so god knows what's up there but i don't believe it's anything important so we'll turn back around and continue on towards the boss when you come into this room tons of of crystal snails take them all out grab the smithing stones that are around the room and you'll now be faced with yet another duo boss fight this time it's two crystallions one with a spear and one with a ring blade just like with all other crystal enemies strike weapons are going to be absolutely fantastic so my build for these enemies sucks balls luckily engval has got my back and he kept one of them distracted while i took the other one out and once they're both dead you'll get the somber stone miners bell bearing two which now lets you buy unlimited quantities of somber smithing stones rank three and four from the twin maiden husks back in round table hold and that's it we're now done in this dungeon so we're going to head to the altus highway junction site of grace and take you through another dungeon to finish off this video we're going to head directly east of this site of grace to just around here on the map and that's where we'll find the next cave but before we do that i'm going to hang around on the map for a minute and talk you through what we're going to do over the next couple of videos so in the next video we'll be covering 
covering the north and northeast of Altus Plateau. But that's not all. If you follow this path down here, there's also this little plateau that is its own mini area. And there isn't a tremendous amount to the north, so I'll be bundling this into the next video as well. And then after that, we'll move over to the west and we'll start heading over to an area I hope you're all as excited about as me, which is Volcano Manor. I haven't decided yet whether I'm going to need to split Volcano Manor up or whether it's just going to be like a 40 minute video. So if you wouldn't mind letting me know if you would sit through a 40 minute video or if you'd rather it being in a few different like 15 to 20 minute segments. Okay, so now that we've done that, we're going to head east and start going towards the cave I've mentioned a few times. But before that, stop and go through this little tunnel to the north. In here, you'll see a few land squirts and you'll also be able to grab the Amber Starlight, which is a quest item needed for Seluvius, which forms part of the overarching Rani quest line. So we'll revisit the use for this item in the NPC videos, but just so that you know, that's where it is. Go and grab it while you're here. Okay, so we'll head along to this cave and we are greeted by a room bear. You can just run past him, but I wanted to prove myself against him and I wanted to defeat him without any spells, which for the most part I managed. Did didn't struggle too much taking him out. Anyway, enough detours. Let's get to the cave and start going through. I'm just going to beeline it to the important sections of this cave. Feel free to explore the rest of it at your leisure, but if you follow my path exactly, you'll hit all of the key items, and that is all you really need. So drop down here, you'll see a big old Miranda flower, a perfumer enemy, and a few of the little flowers as well. Once you've taken them all out, you can hop over to the other side of this tree trunk and loot a perfume bottle and 10 living jar shards from these two chests. Then up on this big log here, you can get three Arteria leaves, and that's it. They are the most important items in this dungeon, apart from obviously the boss. So keep following down, and you'll see a load of items just outside the boss room here. Grab all the loot, and then head in, and we'll now be faced with an Omen Killer and Miranda the Blighted Bloom. Many ways to take these out. You've fought them both 1v1 separately many times. I'm sure separately you would absolutely annihilate them, but because it is a duo boss fight, just be very careful. What I like to do is bring the omen killer away and deal with him separately, then come back and take out the flower when she's by herself. And once you've taken them both out, you'll be rewarded with the great omen killer cleaver and a very pathetic amount of runes. And that really is all there is to it. I believe there'll be two more videos covering this section of Altus Plateau. And then as I say, Volcano Manor is also going to be coming up very, very soon as well, along with all of the regions surrounding Lanedale Royal Capital just after that. I hope you enjoyed this one. I hope you had as much fun watching it as I did making it. And as always, I hope you learned at least one thing from this video. That's always my aim. I just want to entertain and educate at the same time. It really is a dream come true for me to be able to do this. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one. I hope you have an absolutely fantastic day. In today's installment of the things you may have missed in Elden Ring, we're continuing our exploration of the Altus Plateau. Before we get into it, quite a few people have been asking me to show the build I've been using throughout this playthrough. So I thought I'd show you my stats here. Just keep in mind that they may look a bit inflated because I'm using both Marika's and Radagon's Scar Seal. And also I've currently got Godric's Great Rune equipped and active. So I've got plus eight to all my stats. As you can see, I haven't really specialized in any one stat, and that's because I want to have a very versatile build so that I can keep switching out my weapons and talismans every few videos. Partially, this is so that I can show you as much of what this game has to offer as possible, but also to show you that there are many viable builds and weapons, and you don't need to pigeonhole yourself into just using one weapon or one build for your entire playthrough. With that being said, I'm currently using the Moon Veil, but as of next video, I'd actually really love to pump a few more points into strength and go for a dual wield greatsword build because I've yet to do a strength build in Elden Ring and they look so much fun. So as of next video, you may see me wielding two massive swords instead of the Moon Veil. As for my armor set, I just use whatever I feel looks the most awesome on the day. Armor definitely plays a bigger role in this game than it has in previous From Software games, especially for certain areas and enemies where you need things such as Scarlet Rot resistance or Bleed resistance, etc. But with them exceptions aside, I'd say just wear whatever you think looks the best because you'll enjoy the game even more that way. Now that we've covered my build, we'll move into the first tip. To start off, head north from the Road of Iniquity Grey site, and then you want to start heading west towards this windmill. On your way there, follow where I've come, and on top of this hill, you'll find a battle mage. He's just a big, tough version of the other mages we've dealt with up until this point, and when you take him out, you'll get the battle mage armor set, 
and the Hymer Glintstone Crown, which is my favorite of all of the Glintstone Crowns, as it gives you plus two strength and plus two intelligence for just a small hit to your FP. So we'll stick that on and I'll probably wear that for the rest of this video. Now head west further towards the windmill, kill or run past all the rats as you go. And then inside this little shack here, you'll come across the giant rat ashes. That's the only item of note around here. So now you can start heading northeast towards this next windmill. And once you're here at the east windmill pasture, there'll be a bunch of them crazed fanatical cultist ladies. And what appeared to be a bonfire was actually a pile of flaming skeletons. So be careful taking them out. And just where they were, you'll also be able to grab yourself the nobles set along with a navy hood. Finish looting everything else in this area and you can also grab the twinned knight swords. And we're done here, so we'll move over to the main windmill town in the east. Keep following the road to the east and you'll come to the windmill village pasture. Take out all the villagers here, along with all the dogs and the misbegottens. And once you've taken care of all of them, you can grab their loot. And then in this shack, you'll get yourself 10 raw meat dumplings. That's all there is in this little part of the village. So now you want to head further east still and you'll come to the main windmill village. You can grab the site of grace just here right at the entrance and now we can go through the village at our leisure dealing with all the revelers and looting everything as we go. As you're making your way up the village head past a few of the buildings on your left and circle round up this hill here. Now you can get on top of this house and then drop down onto the next roof just slightly below and on the edge of this roof you'll get yourself some exalted flesh. There is another item around here somewhere which is what I actually came here to show you but I forgot exactly where it was. And then I ended up falling off the cliff and fell and died right next to the item that I was trying to find. So my death actually served a purpose, which is great. <laughs> so now you can join me on my run back to this item and you wanna actually come to the earlier windmill that we visited where we got the raw meat dumplings. And now you can hug the edge of this cliff here. And then when you get to the end, just past these birds, you can grab the celebrant's skull weapon. Now head back into the village and keep working your way up. As you get right near the top, you come to this group of revelers here where you can loot a gold firefly. There's another item just on the edge of the cliff here that we can't currently get and it will be one of the ghost artists sat in his chair and he will appear once you've got the flightless bird painting. That painting is in Lanedale, the royal capital and even though we haven't gotten there in this playthrough yet, I have actually already done a video on the Royal Capital, so make sure you go check that out and you'll know where to grab this painting. Once you've got it, you can then come back here and get the loot from the artist and he'll reward you with the Fire's Deadly Sin incantation. Now, the last thing you want to do in this village is carry on up the hill to the north and you'll encounter the Godskin Apostle boss. I thought I remembered him absolutely whooping my ass on my first playthrough, and he may well have done, honestly. Either I've got a bit better at this game, or I'm just overleveled. Probably the second one. And once you've taken him out, you'll be rewarded with his weapon, which is the Godskin Peeler, and the Scouring Black Flame. That's all there is to do in this village. So grab the Windmill Heights Sight of Grace just behind where the boss was, and then we'll progress further south for the next tip. Head to the Sight of Grace, back down at the entrance to the village again, and then just sprint to the east. You can completely ignore these trebuchets that are going to start firing at you, but they were really pissing me off. So I opted to sprint towards them and take out all of the soldiers operating them. Once you've cleared out all the guards in these ramparts here, or just ran past them, then you can head north up the mountain. And in this camp, once you've cleared out all the guards again, will be the Ash of War Lightning Slash. Grab the loot from all the enemies you've just murderized, and you'll see a tower off to your west. There's a mounted royal knight and a few crossbow wielding soldiers around as well. So be careful in this area as you're clearing everyone out. Or again, as always, you can just use the run past everyone option if you want. Either way, once you've made it past them, come to the broken wall here and you'll be on the highway lookout tower. Jump off round the side and then you'll be inside the tower and you can start scaling up the ladders. On a wooden beam on this floor here, you can grab yourself 10 hefty beast bones. And then once you've defeated the rest of the guards, all the way at the top here, you'll get yourself a great bro. A great bro? <laughs> you'll get yourself a great bow and 20 great arrows. That's everything we needed from this area. So I'll mark these ruins on the map and we'll start heading southwest towards the next tip. As you're getting close to these ruins, they look fairly inconspicuous. No enemies or items to loot. Very boring. However, 
as you get closer you'll see a wandering noble cowering in the corner unfortunately my camera was facing the wrong way so i missed this but once you've taken him out turns out it was a mimic and he will actually turn into one of them giant lions good luck they're always bastards especially in an area like this where there's not really any good ways to cheese it once you've taken it out you'll be able to loot another larval tier then you can come a little bit further up and take out these enemies by this toppled over caravan. And now you can loot three lightning great bolts. Next we'll head a bit further south and grab a sight of grace to set us up for the next few tips. I got really disoriented here because we haven't fully discovered this portion of the map yet. So it takes me a minute to find it, but eventually... You can see it off in the distance here, so we'll go and activate this sight of grace and I'll meet up with you after resting for the next tip. From this site of grace, we're going to swing around the mountain here and end up pretty much directly south of where we currently are on top of the mountain. And when you get here, massive dragon time! Buck knows how to pronounce the name, but ancient dragon Lanciax? Lanciax? God knows. She is an awesome boss fight. I had so much fun with this one. I summoned the Mad Pumpkin Head to help me, and at about 25% of the way through the fight, I ended up accidentally leaving the boss's arena, and he despawned. So it became a one-on-one -on -one again anyway. But this is the first fight I've had for a while, where I felt like I was at the correct level, and like it was a challenge without being bullshit. So I had a lot of fun taking this dragon out. And when you do finally take her down, you'll be rewarded with Lansax's Glaive, which is not a spell I can use at the moment, unfortunately. So I can't show it off to you because it requires 40 faith to use, but it sounds incredible. This attack unleashes trails of lightning, and it's in the paragraph below this description that gave me the insight that this is a female dragon and since people called out to me way back I think it was in the Weeping Peninsula video that Lutel is also female I've now been more conscious and reading the descriptions rather than just assuming every single character in this whole game is a dude <laughs> So now that we've slayed the dragon we'll teleport back to the previous site of grace and we'll move on to the next tip Right after beating the dragon, I just accidentally grabbed an item off camera, so let me just jump back onto this little structure here, and I'll show you on the map where I am. And on the corpse on the edge here, you can get yourself a stone sword key. Now we'll go all the way down to the southwest, to this structure right in the bottom corner of the plateau here. On your way, as you're running through these piles of swords, you'll see a scarab, and once you get him dead, you'll get the lightning ram ash of war. Which essentially turns you into Sanic. Gotta go fast. I love it. So all the sheep in this area, if you've, you may have, you may have noticed that all the sheep in this area, when they roll around, loads of lightning sparks come off of them. You can literally do that now. It is so much fun. I think someone has actually done a lightning roll only playthrough. And also while you're here, you can grab all the golden runes from these tombs here. Then you can come to the ruins of this church that we were heading towards. Take out the Royal Knight on horseback just out the front. And as you come into the Stormcaller Church, you can grab yourself 10 lightning great bolts, a sacred tear, and just in the corner behind where we came through the entrance, after you take out the soldiers, you can also get yourself the Dragon Bolt Blessing. There's one more thing to do in this video, and to get there we're going to head north, and we're also going to encounter another boss. As you're coming up to the entrance to this cave, which will be the last tip for this video, outside you'll be faced with the Black Knife Assassin. The first time I fought this guy seemed to be going really well. He's got like zero health left, and I'm on half health. I've just done a visceral attack on him. I'm just about to deliver the death blow. And then out of nowhere, he just comes up with an instant grab, and he's just like, yeah, no, you're dead now. Okay, uh, great. <laughs> what the fuck? So anyway, let's come back and absolutely wreck his face the second time we face him. Now that he's dead, you can head in the building, go down the lift, and I will meet you inside now that we're at the Sainted Hero's Grave, and we will go through this dungeon together. All right, before we even start this section of the video, I just want to address these bloody hidden path ahead messages. Oh. <laughs> They are my biggest pet peeve. Why do people have to be such trolls, man? Like, you know, you know inside of you that a hundred percent this is not a hidden path, but you always have to hit the wall just in case. 
fuck you. <laughs> Right, now that the hidden path rant is out the way, you can pop a stone sword key in the gargoyle statue here, come into the room, deal with the enemy, and you can loot a crimson seed talisman off of this corpse. And now we'll continue into the actual dungeon itself. Okie dokie, so almost straight away, you'll come to an illusionary wall just here. But from what I could see, having explored it myself, it doesn't lead anywhere. I'm not gonna lie, this is one of the caves I am less familiar with. So please let me know if I did miss anything up on that ledge that the illusionary wall led me to. But regardless of that, we'll skip that and hop back down. And the gimmick for this cave will also come back in a couple of other caves in the future. And it's around these pools of light on the floor. There are certain enemies that start off just looking like shadows. And you have to guide them into the pools of light. And that will then make them vulnerable to attacks. In their shadow form, they are completely invincible. So once you've dealt with these first few imps, I'll just call out anything of note that I come across in this dungeon because it's a very long one with not much stuff in it you can grab lots of ghost glove wart and there's the odd item here and there so as we come into this room you'll see the whole center of the floor here looks fairly precarious and there is some signs warning you about it as well for a change they're not trolling you stand in the middle of the room here and you'll fall through the floor so run around the edge and grab the Landell soldier ashes first and now we do actually want to deliberately fall through the floor You'll drop down into one of the pools of light and there'll be loads of gargoyles around you. Let them all come to you and as they become vulnerable, take them all out. Then once they're dead, there's a lever just on the right hand side of this door that you can open. And now we'll come through into a room with loads of putrid corpses and guillotines and watch me die to one like an idiot. So now we will speed run back to where we just were and at the end of these two hallways of guillotines you'll see the door to the boss room. Now to open it up, climb up this ladder that we passed on our right hand side and hop down the other side of this wall. A revenant will spawn to your left, be very careful. Honestly, I think Revenants might be my most hated enemy in the game. Right, now that the Revenant's dead, carry on along this walkway and you'll see a Shadow Grave Warden. You now need to lead him back to a pool of light. So I get him to drop down and follow me along the guillotines and bring him into the hidden room that we opened up earlier. Once you've taken him out, he is the trigger, he's the lever for this dungeon, so he will now grant you access to the boss room at the end of the dungeon. Now, I feel like there is at least least one item I missed here. I've tried to be so thorough and so perfect in this playthrough and I can pretty much guarantee you I will not miss another item from here on forward but this dungeon really stumped me so I feel like there's another talisman in here somewhere that I missed. This bit of the video is mega it's like a 17 minute clip this one but honestly you can skip almost all of it because it's me just trying to figure out where the fuck I'm going. Please someone let me know if I've missed a side passage or an illusionary wall or something. If anyone can help out in the comments, I'll pin it so that no one else has to miss it. Or maybe I did get everything. If so, yay. <laughs> so now we're at the boss room and we're gonna fight an ancient hero of Zamor, who is an absolute wet wipe. Kill him dead and you'll get the ancient dragon knight Kristoff ashes of war. This guy sounds awesome. So whilst we're doing the outro, I'm gonna head back to round table hold, level him up and then go somewhere and summon him so that we can just watch him murderize some enemies. And with that, I just just like to say thank you as always so much for watching please like and subscribe if you haven't already have an absolutely fantastic day and i'll see you in the next video bye bye